exploration on the uh, urban block and the capability of it to define the city. We are working with the urban block and the relationship to it with the grid. We're always working also with the urban grid and we would like to raise a certain conversation on the relationship between these urban blocks and the city, a conversation that is dealing with political, formal, and also material aspects of architecture. This year we are working with uh, Santiago of Chile, which is a challenging city for ourselves because it's the place where everything about neoliberal economy started in the 70s. And Nuria is going to tell us a bit more about it. Well, as Francisco was saying, for the last five years, Intermediate Unit 8 has been working on the political, understanding it as the relationship between citizens and the use of the city space. Uh, this specific question moves us to Latin America, where recently produced architectural examples have worked on these critical questions in very interesting ways. In this time period that followed, followed the 2008 economic crisis, um, we have noticed some radical changes in cities' configuration worldwide under the new version of economic liberalists advocating liberalization, privatization, free trade, open market, economic liberalism, um, the regulation and reduction in government spending in order to enhance the role of the private sector in the economy. As a consequence of these processes, cities start to have a similar configuration, losing the, any connection with their own nature, and the, and the relationship with their inhabit, inhabitant need, real needs by subduing their configuration to private investment interests. Capital cities in southern latitudes of Latin America know very well the consequences of being under the pressure of global economic forces to a, towards a neoliberal model. They have experienced not only the characteristic consequence of a highly privatized public space, but also the rewarding of initiatives and changes in the urban planning implemented by governments and social organizations to confront the abusive action of private investment, such as this example in Sao Paulo of the non-city advertisement policy and the public institutional program that we also saw last year in Sao Paulo. Santiago of Chile is also aware of these processes. As it is the first capital in the world affected by a neoliberal agenda. Since 1973, Santiago's process of urbanization has been driven by the needs and wants of economic regimes that have mandated the specific forms of surplus accumulation, market expansion, territorial control, and social subjugation. In fact, Chile is the first neoliberal state experiment produced by a US-supported military coup in 1973 that hosted the democratic elected socialist government of Salvador Allende which was believed to be a threat to the capitalist elite of Chile and the big interests of foreign corporate capital investment. The new economic regime, thought by these guys, the Chicago boys, drove the city to a proliferation of high-rise towers for big business corporate buildings, gated communities, shopping malls, and exclusive housing developments. All activities tended to be indoors, introverted, restricted, and protected. These forms of construction help the development by foreign investment, but at the same time create more inequalities in this city and the destruction of the everyday life in the city street. However, in Chile, the city government has traced recently a 2020 plan uh, that looks for a more social engaged agenda, uh, changing the city infrastructure, public transport, and services. This uh, plan and some of the architectural examples that we will see there that are following these ideas follow the particular block structure, trying not to destroy it and to create a greater engagement between the exterior and the interior of the blocks. This use of the block configuration com goes back to the foundation of Santiago in 1541 by the Spanish conqueror Pedro de Valdivia that uh, traced this grid that you can see here of 120 by 120 meters with a central square, Plaza de Armas. And this colonial regulation has been used by the city for years um, that as the main manner to maintain the, uh, to uh, develop the city towards the periphery. The city is in between the Andes and the Pacific Sea, so it has a very strong connection with the nature. And as you can see in this picture, there are some hills in between this vast grid uh, that maintains this traditional relation between the people of the city and the landscape, natural landscape. And you can see also the Andes in the back of the, of the city. This situation, the grid, um, 
and the blocks and how was traced the city and this new plan uh, become Santiago a perfect place for us to work with an uh, urban block to be inserted in this uh, neoliberal grid. Okay, so uh, we're going to be dealing with an urban block. This is something we've been doing for the last two years, uh, how architectural blocks were able to shape the Latin American city, something that you can almost foresee when looking at a, a view of Buenos Aires or Sao Paulo. And we are going to continue in the development of this interest, looking at the work of people before us who were dealing with this uh, kind of theme, you know, like the early work of OMA, even all the people in the 70s, we are going to have seminars to debate all these ideas. This is a uh, Roma Interrota proposal by James Stirling. It's again how, uh, let's say, isolated, freestanding urban artifacts are able to construct the city. And we are very interested in how, in a way, urban and architectural form is able to delimit a territory of itself. That is the case of this Piazza Amphitheater. Regardless of the changing condition of the city, this form is prevailing in the end. When you are rescuing, when you are protecting this form and this space from the city, what you have is expression of the people going on. So we are very much interested in this, but we are going to add another layer of consistency to this discourse with this kind of uh, intriguing quotation by Juan Borges as an architect from Chile who says that architecture is a language of substantial immobility. And this is probably not easy to understand, but when we look at the work by Borges himself, we understand that it's not only about the permanence of form in the city, but it's also a kind of material stability. It's the fleshiness, it's the sensuality, it's the way in which the buildings are able to represent a material physical experience that are becoming also relevant to us. So we are going to work on this that is not only part of a Latin American tradition, that is very much a tradition that you can find in uh, Chile, that is uh, a place where you have poets like Pablo Neruda, maybe you know, he's one of the most famous poets from Latin America. He has very interesting work in describing how matter, how physical experience is becoming erotic, is becoming sensual. But not only that, he was able to produce certain architectural tests. This uh, image in the right is a house by himself, and his houses are always dealing with this kind of exploration, of continuous sensation, this kind of experience or materiality. So he describes it as uh, being a jacket or a dress that is very much attached to yourself and you cannot get rid of it. So we are going to visit these houses that I think is going to be very inspirational for, for you in order to understand what we mean this, with this kind of material presence that you cannot avoid. And also the experiments of people in the 70s uh, that is still working today, that is this, the open city. It's a 40 years of experimentation on how to live and how experiment or how to experiment with materiality and, and this is an experiment that we know well and we have been contributing to, and we would like you to investigate this and also to share the experience of visiting it. Uh, we are going to deal with this idea that materiality, form, are going together, and we are carving into, we are digging the spatiality that has been rescued to the city. We are folding and playing in, ter in terms of understanding what is that space, getting into a smaller scale of it, trying to see which is the small scale, trying to see what is the texture, what is uh, the way in which we communicate the experience of these uh, spaces, and trying to see also how to represent the quality of a sensation that we believe that is very relevant today. And we are investigating that in this year in the unit. Well, as is described in the prospectus, uh, the unit structure of the course we will revolve around the formal research on the urban block interrogating a spatial, organizational, material, and contextual aspects in three interrelated phases. You can see here there is material, form, and field that we will explore during the first and second term. And then during the third term, we will review and finalize the portfolios. Um, the first uh, material phase, uh, we will have uh, rough material possibilities that will be conducted, understanding the expression of its natural state, the structural logic, and organic morphology at multiple scales. So we will start with a first um, intuitional uh, idea of where is for you the block, uh, using different materials, as you can see here, paper, cardboard, uh, 
cloud foam. We have been doing this uh, the last two years and it's quite successful because you are fresh and you don't have any preconception about how the block should be. And later we continue with other materials. Uh, there are more uh, stable, let's say, there are stone, uh, plaster, metal, or, or wood. Uh, with this, uh, this idea of doing another an extension of this first workshop with other materials is to find new schematic designs that we later define one formal idea that we progress during the year. And building on the formal discussion generated by the, these exercises, the block envelope will be reassessed uh, by you working from drawings to models and vice versa. And the politics generated by the block in the city space will be explored through four different questions. There are first permeability of, or that will generate this a series of models, as you can see here, sections and plans, defining how permeable and accessible the blocks are and the different levels of privacy of block proposals. A second question will be porosity that will also, uh, here, the fluorescence will be directed to a series of model testing different systems of openings of the block scheme, consistent with your uh, political argument that you are uh, uh, creating during the year. And the last two questions could be uh, transparency and reflection that are increasingly important in the relationship between the, the block and the exterior and the interiority of the block. So all of these uh, pictures that you see here are examples from last year and the year before from students in our unit. Um, so as a summary of all these experimentations, you have a compilation of models that will help you to build the portfolio. So the portfolio is not only the drawings, but also the models that you will construct in all these exercises. Later in the second formal phase, we will analyze different examples of blocks, understanding uh, ideas such as free section, voice, and circulation. And this uh, analysis will later be extrapolated to your first schematic ideas of the block. We will analyze some block examples uh, and also some examples from Chile that we will visit. For example, here we have a Cepal building by Emilio Dujan on the left and the Copelec uh, uh, headquarters by Juan Borges on the right or here two examples of Alejandro Aravena. Then all, with all these findings, uh, as I was saying, you applied all this analysis to your block proposals. And later we will see how the block can be, can be capable of being a programmatic anchor in the city. So we bring the building into the context of the city. Uh, you see, and we will represent these ideas through, as you can see here, axonometric drawings, like this one from David Kuh last year, and some uh, scenarios. And our experience these two years, and also our discussion with the students last year, uh, we have decided to move this year to a workshop, more useful workshop for you to develop quickly all these uh, diagrams that you saw before, uh, that will be par uh, Rhino and then para grasshopper, depending on the levels. We will see if we have to extend it more or less, but our idea is to help you to develop this, this part of the portfolio. The second workshop will be later, and it will be a kind of seminar where we will bring different people to discuss how to represent the spaces that you are creating inside of the block and the ideas that you have of this block in the city, of what generates this block in the city. The third stage that is filled it's a research uh, stage in which you will research about physical, sociocultural, and economic aspects of Santiago City. Uh, at first, we will have some, a conversation with you on the implications of inserting a block into the urban context of Santiago Colonial Grid. And for this, we will have some seminars where we will discuss and we will have some readings and some people, some people coming to give us lectures about the grid, about the city. We will uh, compare different grids around the world and see what are the advantages and disadvantages of the, of the grid in Santiago. And this uh, research will be also accompanied with uh, uh, analysis of what is the everyday life in the city of Santiago, what are the economic aspects, the cultural aspects that will help you to create your briefs or program, programs that will, in, will be inserted in the blog. This research will be uh, compiled or um, summarized in a small portfolio, but also you can create, for instance, a video like one of our students did two years ago about Buenos Aires. That is the one that you see here. There's no sound. Yes, 
for this part of research, the unit three will be very instrumental. The unit will travel to Chile uh, in an 11 day trip that we will do at the end of the first term. And we will visit the country. First, we will visit the city of Santiago that you see here. We will see different architectural examples that you saw before. We will also visit the university there, the, um, the Catholic uh, university there. And we, sorry. and we will go also to close to Santiago to the open city that Francisco was mentioning before. There is a school that has a tradition in material experimentations. We will visit this place uh, with our visiting school some years ago, and we, will, we would like to share with you this uh, amazing place and stay there maybe for a day or two to, to visit the houses, to visit the community that is there and discuss with them what are the ideas about the material experimentations. Uh, we will also visit the city of Valparaíso as a contrast with Santiago. These two cities are very different, but they are, they are very close uh, by. And we will visit, as Francisco was saying, the houses of Pablo Neruda here in Isla Negra and here in Santiago, La Chascona. And finally, if some of you may know uh, this example of Elemental by Alejandro Aravena. There is an example of housing for low-income inhabitants, and we will visit some of these examples also in Chile. Later in the second term, we offer you voluntary, no compulsory, to visit Madrid, because we did it two years ago, and it was very helpful for the students to develop the blog proposals. There, we will visit some examples of uh, blogs, especially housing, that may, might help you to develop the program and develop the proposals in a more real world real way, let's say that you visit a real example and then you can reassess what you are designing. And finally, a practical question, a bit boring, but we have to say, it. <laughs> the unit has the option too of technical studies. We will work about light, large span structures and materiality. We have been working with the students the last two years with this. This is an example from last year and this one and this one. And they were very successful students working with this. They, they got high pass, so we hope this year we have similar results or, or better with you. So, uh, yes, a uh, few words to finish. Uh, first of all, I would like to, to mention that we believe that being very well structured across the year with this structure that we are providing to you, you have more freedom to do whatever you want. So the more structure, the more freedom. So that's why we believe it has to be like that uh, as, as long as we have experienced it before. Uh, these are a few slides on things we've done uh, outside of the unit. Uh, this is a series of workshops. Uh, we believe they are related to our material experimentation that we are asking this year because in first it is in Open City, this place in Chile, and we were collaborating on working with the people from there and building this shed with poets, artists, industrial designers, and it was a kind of very interesting experience over there. Uh, this is a kind of sun protecting shed with a kind of sitting in formal place over there, all together in one same structure. So we, we did several of these, We're always reminding that it's important to be joyful about it. It's important that the experience of architecture is something that you really want to follow, you really want to feel. If not, it doesn't worth it. So we've been doing several of these workshops. This is in Cuba where we didn't have materials, so we had to, to bring all the materials in our suitcase. That is what you see here. Everything we brought in the suitcase, and we did a, a fabric structure, also a kind of very straightforward material experimentation involving all the people over there. This is the director of the school over here. This is part of the result and always a bit of party that we think is important. Uh, this is part of the office work. Uh, we consider this uh, villa to be important in our office because of the radicality of the decisions that were made. We really wanted to disconnect the, the villa from the city, so we did this blind wall that is totally negating whatever is happening outside, but at the same time is in, increasing the friction between the courtyard, the private courtyard and the house. That is what you see with this total opening in the back and also a kind of two-fold condition in the edge that is, in a way, responding to two different ways in which you want to inhabit this house, even the dog. Uh, this is another important uh, uh, project in our career, sometimes, uh, some years ago, sorry. This is a medical center in the middle of the mountains, and in this case, we were using the materials that were 
the context in which the building was going to be built. So we decided that it was in the middle of the road, so we needed to use the language of the road in order to delimit what is pedestrian for this building. So we are using this stripe, so we are using this blank wall in order to allow the ball games to happen and to hit the wall. And we like very much the dots that they generate in the facade. And we like to use the centenary trees around, even the peaks, in order to create this kind of relationship with the windows. Um, they were uh, uh, awarded in Spain. They were important in, in Santa. And these are all the projects we are working with now. It's a hotel in a very important or very kind of a strong landscape in Murcia, and the landscape is going to go underneath the building and reflect it into the hotel. This is a winery that is reflecting how the process of wine production is happening by gravitation in these three different levels. This is a small house that is challenging because it's a patio house only in the first floor, and the ground floor is totally fluid and only with three walls in the structure. This is part of the work we are doing with a sculptor from Spain. Uh, he wanted to do very experimental structures. He's, this is his work in Spain in, in Granada. So this is the structure that we built for him. This is another building we did with him, very kind of expressive, strange, even nightmarish in the way we have to calculate the structure for this. And, and it's working pretty well no? in the way that he's able to convey the idea that uh, concrete is a very fluid material, kind of even dramatic material when we do use it in this way. So uh, yes, a final video to show you a bit of the environment in which you are going to be working this year. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.